The following is brought to you by Discover Dominica Authority. Welcome to Dominica. <laughs> An extremely fascinating island in the Caribbean, with its unique blend of Kalinago, African, French, and English influences, cooked up in a volcanic pot that produces one of the most enchanting tourist products in the Caribbean. We were invited to Dominica for the World Creole Music Festival, an immersive three-day concert that is arguably one of the best world music concerts in this part of the world. As a first-time visitor to Dominica, I was ready to embark on a musical journey. And tonight, I'm going to take you with me as we explore Dominica, mostly via its music, for a very hectic four-day trip. The World Creole Music Festival turns 22 in 2022. The festival always takes place in the last weekend in October and features the best in Zouk, Bouillon, and Kadan Calypso, but also regularly includes Soka and Calypso artists, dancehall or reggae acts, and Afrobeat stars. It makes for a show that is high on variety and allows for a truly distinct music festival, quite unlike any other in a Caribbean that has developed quite an affinity for music festivals typically labeled as jazz, even if the format is more of a mainstream R&B mix as a way of attracting visitors to their shores. But the music festival formula has been a successful one for Dominica, as CEO of Discover Dominica, Colin Piper explains. What is happening this year is exactly what was conceived, so to speak. And just four quick points. One is that the festival was established as an event to increase visitor arrivals uh, to the island around our independence time. And um, the month of October used to be number 11, number 10, 11, or 12 in terms of visitor arrivals. And since the inception of the World Creole Music Festival, it is now number one, two, or three. Uh, in the year. So, mission accomplished in terms of visitor arrival. But, and, and we are expecting about 10,000 people uh, during this week and into this uh, weekend. We have about 6,500 coming via the ferry from St. Lucia, Martinique, and Guadeloupe. Um, and we have probably, and we have the rest coming in via air. And we probably have one or two boats coming in as well. The festival also has within its mandate a responsibility to serve as a platform for local artists. Uh, it's important to note that 50% uh, of the artists for this year are resident and local artists. So the second platform was to provide a stage upon which the local artists could propel their career. And we're happy uh, to be doing so. We have um, people like um, Asa Bantan and Triple K, who are stalwarts, so to speak, of the World Creole Music Festival now. But once upon a time, they were rookies. But international artists have always had a place within the festival. Both Kes Defantala of Kes the Ban and Jamaica Sisla Kalonji are both repeat performers at the festival. Kes told us it was a welcome return to the Nature Isle for him as he not only loves performing here, he also loves their music. That's the mission. I guess for us, we were always sort of like the middle ground. Um, and I, I like Bouya. I think Bouya has an energy. Honestly, I didn't. There was a time that I performed for the Creole Festival. I think it was the first time. And there was this um, Bouya band playing. And I was listening to it in the changing room. And it inspired a song. So, uh, so I was like, wow, this is something powerful about this. And then I saw um, a man from vanilla, skin white like vanilla. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That was years ago. <laughs> but the reality is, is that 
the music is such an energy, it's such a rooted to the ground energy. And when I saw Asa Banton perform, there was some performance that I saw him and I was like, wow, I caught it then. I only honestly understood it fully when he did it. And, um, you know, it's just something that I'm, I'm observing and I'm seeing. I, I don't like to just do something. I want to be able to really blend it and make sense. But I full, full respect to Asa Banton. He totally blew me away with that performance, you know. And Sizzler. Hail the festival for centering Dominica's culture. I'm looking forward to seeing the people in the frenzy of love, joy, happiness, supporting the Creole Festival because it's indigenous. And we as people, we need to display more of our culture. And our culture is what um, gives the basic platform for our economy. We grew from the economy of our culture. So having this festival going once again is beautiful. I get, I, I get a lot of time to sing, I get to meet a lot of um, persons, you know what I mean? This festival is not just for myself, for the family reunion, people from all over the Caribbean that, that they speak Creole, they come and do a lot of stuff. You never know, people might have um, vast interest in the country also. So having a festival like this is the right time to come and see the people, see the beauty. When you come at the time of the festival, you get to see the beauty of the people. Not that we're disrespecting any other event, but with a festival that's cultural for the people in the country. So you will come and see the people and see how beautiful they are, see how they would um, display themselves and relate to other stuff in the world. So it's beautiful having myself and the country of Dominica doing this. But he also hails it for celebrating Caribbean culture in general. He told me the festival inspires him to look at his own spiritual practices and customs with a renewed vigor. First and foremost, the culture of Rastafari, which is really the culture of the tabernacle, which is really the precepts and the principles of the tabernacle of Rastafari, gives us all this holiness and the way we put ourselves together and the way we dress. So what's really um, beautiful about, about the Caribbean culture is that they maintain that African um, beauty, that African renaissance. They've maintained that African purpose. And in doing a festival like this, it's an example for the world even for Africa also, because it's from Africa. So that's the main thing that really um, caught me. They're still doing Africa. Sisla often performs in Trinidad, so switching gears a bit, I asked what he loved the most about the Trinidadian audience. The Trinidadian audience, they're crazy about the music. Once they say Sisla, they all go crazy in the right way. I like that. Trinidadian, they supported reggae music. And, you know, for a, a music that's been curated in Jamaica, the Caribbean um, persons, they took it all up as if they're the curators. And I like that because it was meant for them. The reggae music is for teaching the people of who they are, where they're from, and what they should be doing, and where they should be going, and be positive about everything, and be uniting the people of the Caribbean and the world at large. So having a country like Trinidad, um, supporting other people's music and other people's culture also, even though they're very cultural and spiritual, that's lovely because you're with a beautiful country and you don't want to be setting bad example. You lose a reputation, you lose a kingdom. So Trinidad people keep doing the good thing, you know what I mean? And no crime, no violence. You're Trinidad, come on. Let me tell you, after this interview, I was doubly pleased when I saw him perform on Friday's show. Let's take a quick break, but when we return, we'll take you on a hike to the Twin Falls and introduce you to a bubble beach experience. Where the town the in the Where the SM crew? Welcome to Dominica. For four days, our home was the Villa Coptal in Rosso. Currently, yes, I said currently, under renovation, the villa was coerced to open a bit earlier than planned to accommodate the scores of people that flew into the country for the festival. That said, one or two inconveniences didn't spoil its charm or the hospitality of the staff, and we vowed to visit again once it's fully ready to open to give it a proper chance. Situated in the suburbs, we were close enough to the capital and the festival grounds and to some of Dominica's must-see sites. Okay, so we're here at Trafalgar Falls in Dominica. Now, Dominica is known as the Nature Isle, which means that they have quite a few must-see sites that you have to visit when you come here. Okay. 
So one of the things about Trafalgar Falls is that it's called the Twin Waterfall. Over here is the Father Falls. I think I, someone told me that the water is hot there. And then this is Mother, which is the Cold Water Falls. So if you want to do a little um, aqua therapy, you know, heat into cold, you can do it right here on um, Trafalgar Falls, including getting a little bit of cardio by trying to climb up to the very top where they have um, some pools of water where you can settle and enjoy the whatever temperature you've decided to take. We opted not to bathe. I highly recommend water shoes for if you plan to go into the water as the falls itself are rocky. But to be fair, many opted to navigate the rocks barefoot. Always check with the guys if you decide to climb the falls for safety. Now everyone we spoke to said the waterfall pre-Hurricane Maria in 2017 is nothing like what it is now. You will be quite fine with sneakers when you're on the trails. The most important thing might be having your camera handy for the essential selfie or impromptu photo shoot because the hike to and from the falls was gorgeous. Then it was time for a short drive to Watton Waven, a natural spa unlike any other. It is a series of hot springs and sulfur and mud pools that are believed to have healing properties. And while that claim could be debated, they're definitely relaxing. And the minerals in the soil have created some of the most beautiful flower patches that I have ever seen lining the trails. This is a must visit for the return trip I already know that I will be making. In a region that has staked its claim as the best place to go to for sun, sand and sea, Dominica is well poised to serve as the wellness capital of the Caribbean. With the Caribbean Tourism Organization putting Caribbean wellness as its theme for 2022, Dominica could, in adherence to the World Tourism Day theme of rethinking tourism, market their nature trails, flora, springs hot and cold as a spot for healing. And in a world still recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic, renewal might look like a dip in a beach full of bubbles. So I'm in the spa portion of Bubble Beach, as promised. And there are a few little bubbles coming up. It's actually quite exciting, especially if you've never seen it before like me. Um, the water is not too hot. It's actually just, it's merely warm. Um, but it's a notable difference from the normal colder temperatures and the colder water that's coming in. And if I put my hand right here, it's actually really hot. So that's quite interesting. Um, I'm wearing boat shoes because this is a very rocky beach. A lot of Dominica's beaches are not necessarily sandy per se, so you kind of want to come prepared. The bubbles, which you may see here, are caused by fumaroles, which are vents or openings on the sea floor from which gases from beneath the Earth's surface travel through the water as bubbles. Since this is volcanic activity, there's also a warming of the Earth and the salt water. And in the case of Bubble Beach, the heat is closer to the shore. You get normal sea temperature outside of the enclosure. Not too far from Sufrey, where Bubble Beach is located, is a seaside community of Scott's Head. Lined with places to buy drinks, food, and knickknacks of all sorts, this is an excellent place for a lazy day line. Now, chill days are recommended if you're coming to Dominica specifically for the World Creole Music Festival, because your nights will be the absolute opposite of this. Music Festival is held on the last weekend in October, with the last Friday being Creole Day. It is a day where you will find people wearing their traditional dress, known as a wop duyette, with its distinctive madras print. There is the traditional costume, but you'll often find many people will take the traditional print fabric to their tailors to fashion it into a more modern or original interpretation of the dress. There's a parade with adults and children alike to traditional music. It's quite the experience. 
and since it was taking place near to Windsor Stadium, our home for the next three nights, we grabbed an early look at the technical setup. So we're here in Dominica for the World Music Festival. Obviously, this is just the morning and you can see that they're still setting up behind me on stage. But tonight is where everything will start. We have Shen Sia, we have Kes the Band, we have Sizzla Kalanji and of course, the King of Bouillon, Asa Banton. And a few short hours later, the place was transformed with lights, sights, and drinks. Okay, so tonight we're seven shot sour guests, and this one is Belfast Estate Rum Punch, and this one is Tea Posh. There's a bit of French rum in there, so we're hoping everybody enjoys it tonight. And while drinks are nice, you came for the music. This was my first introduction to Virgine and Quai de Lac. They are a Haitian band that sings compo. The female singer's name is Bejin, and her voice is astounding. This is their first time performing at the festival, and they were well received by the audience. The Creole Festival is one that is very attractive to visitors from the French Caribbean, because the music they know and love is very much included. So they reward it with their visits. Thousands came across from neighboring Guadeloupe, Martinique, and St. Lucia, many via ferry to enjoy their faves. When Kandal and Slipso Pioneer's Midnight Groovers came on stage on Sunday night, we saw several people rush to position themselves in front of the stage, with arms outstretched dancing and singing every lyric. If you want to get to know the Midnight Groovers a little better, they have a YouTube page filled with their Kandal and Slipso hit list. The, the Kadas from, from way, way back in the day was so warm and so inviting, you know? Um, and like when you listen to the likes of Midnight Groovers who perform tonight, you know, the feeling that they just create amongst people is, is magical. One of the advantages of a live performance is that it has the power to change your perception of a song or an entire genre, which is what I'm currently experiencing. And for Caribbean music fans of genres other than soca and dancehall, there may be no greater showcase for the fans of the music, especially the ones from St. Lucia. They definitely made their presence felt. This is a loyal but demanding audience that will hang on to your every word or withhold their love. It depends. <laughs> Festival is a music lover's dream. Because if you love dancehall, it was there. It was really nice seeing Sizzler wearing a Madra sash with his suit. His backup singers were also dressed in Dominica's traditional walk duet. There was also Suka. Soulful vocals inspired by Kai Soul, Rock, Reggae, Out of Trinidad, World Music Festival. Give it up for A fave with the ladies. It's truly amusing to watch how the women in the audience react to Kes Stefantala. I mean, do I even have to say what song she's in right here? She might have been the last performer, arriving on stage at 4 on Monday morning, but the crowds waited. Asa Banton had a similar experience closing off Saturday's show by getting on stage 6 on Sunday morning. So it's here I must introduce you to the Dominican concept of daybreak, which is partying until the sun comes up. So this is the aftermath of daybreak. Now daybreak is basically anytime you go out in Dominica, you are not allowed to finish partying until the sun comes up. That's daybreak. This is the aftermath of that. This was at the very end of the Baudelaire Street party along Dame Eugenie Boulevard. 
time now for another quick break, but when we return, we detail to the best of our ability what happened with the African Giant and the World Creole Music Festival. Don't go too far. Music Festival is held on the last weekend in October, with the last Friday being Creole Day. It is a day where you will find people wearing their traditional dress, known as a wap duyet, with its distinctive madras print. There is the traditional costume, but you'll often find many people will take the traditional print fabric to their tailors to fashion it into a more modern or original interpretation of the dress. There's a parade with adults and children alike to traditional music. It's quite the experience. And since it was taking place near to Windsor Stadium, our home for the next three nights, we grabbed an early look at the technical setup. So we're here in Dominica for the World Music Festival, obviously. This is just the morning, and you can see that they're still setting up behind me on stage, but tonight is where everything will start. We have Shen Sia, we have Kes the Band, we have Sizzler Kalanji, and of course, the King of Bouillon, Asabantan. And a few short hours later, the place was transformed with lights, sights, and drinks. Tonight we're seven shots so our guests and this one is Belfast Estate Rum Punch and this one is Tea Posh. There's a bit of French rum in there. So we're hoping everybody enjoys it tonight. And while drinks are nice, you came for the music. This was my first introduction to Virgin and Quai de Lac. They are a Haitian band that sings compo. The female singer's name is Virgin and her voice is astounding. This is their first time performing at the festival and they were well received by the audience. The Creole Festival is one that is very attractive to visitors from the French Caribbean because the music they know and love is very much included. So they rewarded with their visits. Thousands came across from neighboring Guadeloupe, Martinique and St. Lucia, many via ferry to enjoy their faves. When Kandan Slipso Pioneer's Midnight Groovers came on stage on Sunday night, we saw several people rush to position themselves in front of the stage. With arms outstretched dancing and singing every lyric, if you want to get to know the Midnight Groovers a little better, they have a YouTube page filled with their Kandan Slipso hit list. The, the Kadas from, from way, way back in the day was so warm and so inviting, you know. Um, and like when you listen to the likes of Midnight Groovers who perform tonight, you know, the feeling that they just create amongst people is, is magical. One of the advantages of a live performance is that it has the power to change your perception of a song or an entire genre, which is what I'm currently experiencing. And for Caribbean music fans of genres other than soca and dancehall, there may be no greater showcase for the fans of the music, especially the ones from St. Lucia. They definitely made their presence felt. This is a loyal but demanding audience that will hang on to your every word or withhold their love. It depends. <laughs> Music Festival is a music lover's dream. Because if you love dancehall, it was there. It was really nice seeing Sizzler wearing a Madras sash with his suit. His backup singers were also dressed in Dominica's traditional walk duet. There was also Soka. Soulful vocals inspired by Kaiso, rock, reggae, out of Trinidad, World Creole Music Festival. Give it up for Kaiso! A 
say for the ladies, it's truly amusing to watch how the women in the audience react to Kes Stefantala. I mean, do I even have to say what song she's enjoying here? She might have been the last performer arriving on stage at 4 on Monday morning, but the crowds waited. Asa Banton had a similar experience closing off Saturday's show by getting on stage 6 on Sunday morning. So it's here I must introduce you to the Dominican concept of daybreak, which is partying until the sun comes up. So this is the aftermath of daybreak. Now daybreak is basically anytime you go out in Dominica, you are not allowed to finish partying until the sun comes up. That's daybreak. This is the aftermath of that. This was at the very end of the Baudelaire Street Party along Dame Eugenia Boulevard. Time now for another quick break, but when we return, we detail, to the best of our ability, what happened with the African Giants and the World Creole Music Festival. Don't go too far. Talk Buna Boy and discuss how we got here and here. Are you guys ready to go home or some shit? Are you sure? Because I'm not feeling like you're ready for what's about to happen. The player out here again. I supposed to perform for you long time ago. But you know what? The pay three million dollars to somebody who ain't much of the girl like me. But I'm a Marley Queen! I'm a Marley King! There's one Queen! Put your hands in the air right now! Next time, give me the three million dollars. I know. I know. I know. I Okay, so as you know, we were all waiting with bated breath to see Burner Boy on Saturday, the second day of the World Creole Music Festival. Unfortunately, he connected from, I guess, Tobago to Curacao and was not allowed, or for whatever reason, is delayed in Curacao. Which created a scheduling nightmare for the organizers. Virtually about half an hour to an hour before the announcement was made, we were trying up until then to you know, uh, look at the options, look at all sorts of options. We explored getting him here through Guadeloupe, through Antigua, through Barbados, you know, and it was uh, one challenge after another. And then finally we decided that, you know, the best thing to do would be to get him here early in the morning, before noon on, uh, on Sunday, so that uh, we could make sure we planned for a performance on, on Sunday. When pressed for the reason he could not get to the island, Piper would only say unforeseen circumstances on the part of the artist. An explanation the Prime Minister himself reinforced, but he was also sure to add that weather was not to blame. It's coming tomorrow, it's okay. No problem. <laughs> a little bit disappointed, but um, it's coming tomorrow, right? So I'm pretty much excited for it. I mean, I was really expecting to see him because I've never seen him perform before. So, I'm a bit disappointed. Off camera, some were far less understanding. Which may be why they were not as responsive during Sunday's makeup performance. <laughs> Okay, so finally we have the African Giant on the stage and it's a mixed response from the crowd. Obviously, the closer to the stage, the more vibrant it is. 
but the stadium is full and to the back the audience is not really responding to Burna Boy in the way you would normally expect and it has to do with the fact that of course he didn't show up for Sunday's show Dominicans are very proud people and they're absolutely not happy with that turn of events and also as a performer Burna Boy has been noticing the crowd's lack of energy and kind of scolding them for Dominica. it. And they are responding by withholding their chairs and their <laughs> He kept trying till the end, and to be fair, his performance was top notch. The scheduling nightmare caused by adding him to Sunday's cast, however, had soccer star Patrice Roberts waiting six hours to perform. But by all reports, she had the crowds eating out of her hands. I think every day for this festival, we've left here no earlier than 4 o'clock, 4.30, 5. So, so we're close, but we're not Dominican, so we don't have it yet. But, you know, maybe by next World Creole Music Festival, we'll understand the concept of daybreak and we'll make you all proud. But that's where we're ending this coverage of the 2022 World Creole Music Festival. It's been a pleasure. It's been a blast. It's been a marathon three days, but we made it. And thank you so much for joining us on this crazy journey. That has been the World Creole Music Festival. The proceeding was brought to you by Discover Dominica Authority.